Okay, we're going to deploy a Shortel virtual conferencing appliance using the OVA template. So first thing I'm going to do is into my into my vSphere client, I'm going to go and deploy an OVF template. And I'm going to go look on my drive where it is. Click open. I'm going to hit next. It's going to have everything all previously configured. I'll just leave the default name there. I'll choose which uh, directory that I want to store it in. The available space. I don't think I can actually change that, can I? No. Tells you how much space is left. And then power on after deployment. Yes. And then it's going to start deploying this. And then what we should be able to do is, once it's there, go in and fire up the console and look at the console and see what's going on. Okay, so that's complete. So I'm going to select it, go over to the console, and you should be familiar seeing that this is all looking like the uh, Shortel short gear switches and most of the interfaces, the Linux part. So I'm just going to pause and wait for this to boot up. Okay, it's going to ask me do I want DHCP or static, so right now I'm just going to say DHCP. Server IP, it's going to be the demo system, so I'm going to go 10, no, oh, can use my keyboard, 10.99.0.51. So while that's booting up, I went into, um, to create a new appliance. And I said, give me a virtual collaboration appliance. As in the release 14, you'll see the V phone switch, the trunk switch, and the virtual appliance. I hit go, and right there it gives you the link to download the OVA file. So I already created one called the Virtual SA Bridge. I've given it just a temporary uh, IP address and a temporary MAC with a, a fully qualified domain name. Uh, and then just waiting for the server to boot up so that I can get the actual MAC address and the IP address. Okay, it's finished the installation. It's probably uh, three to five minutes. So we're going to try logging in as the standard appliance on Shortel. So since it's Linux, we'll call this admin and short and the password. And there we go. So we're logged in, SVCCLI, get SVC service get SVC status SVC status okay we'll also go to STCLI to go back to the command line here uh, let's exit out of this STCLI and we're going to take a look at the system configuration All right, so it's got an IP address. Now what we'll do is we'll go into the virtual bridge. We'll give it the new address, which is 10.99.0.53, and we'll have it. And since I don't have any, have any uh, DNS sign, I'll just put it in here as well. See if we can ping it. Yes, we can reach the server. Great, we'll hit save. Look at our connectivity. Look at our quick look. Okay. And let's just uh, take a look at the settings again. Oops. Two. Four dot one thirty seven. Let's just give it a reboot. Yes. And see what happens after we do the reboot. Okay. We rebooted the switch, take a look at a remote desktop from the server, and you can see that the soft switch and the virtual bridge, uh, demo soft switch, virtual bridge are connecting now. Soft switch is not connecting to number one. The virtual bridge is not connecting to anything. Let's take another look. Oh, it hasn't finished rebooting yet, so we'll wait. Okay, after we rebooted the switch, 
or the virtual appliance, what we see now is that all the other appliances can see it, but it cannot see the other appliances. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go back in and we're going to take a look at the quick look. And then let's just bump these switches. Demo switch restart. We'll restart the soft switch as well. Now keep in mind when you are rebooting the uh, the switch, the virtual appliances, they're they're still servers, so they take um, a fair bit longer than the normal shore gear appliances. Just keep that in mind. So from bouncing those other, the soft switch and the demo switch, you can see that the virtual bridge is now connected and we're just going to wait for the others to reconnect. Okay, now that I rebooted it, the old conference bridge is out and we now have full connectivity between the two.